Good morning again. Welcome to the house of the Lord. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's word this morning. I'm going to turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 16. We'll begin with verse 1 today. Proverbs chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. I'll give you a second to turn there. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. You may be seated. Uh, this morning, have you ever, uh, I don't even know if they still have these. I'm sure they do somewhere. I, I don't recall seeing them any time recently. But when I was growing up as a kid, and even um, being a youth pastor, they had something called Mad Libs. Did you guys ever play with Mad Libs where you have a, a story, and but before you know the story, they ask you to fill in the blank, right? So, you know, give us an adjective, and okay, green. You know, give us a number between one and ten, nine, right? You know, asking you a, a series of questions so that uh, when you read the story, you plug in those answers, and the, the story would always be funny and uh, usually quite hilarious as you went through and you put in, made it, especially if you were honest and, you know, and asked you for a teacher's name, you'd give him a teacher's, a real teacher's name and, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, uh, it was always a, a fun time to plug in those answers before you knew the story, hoping the story and knowing the story was ultimately going to be funny and entertaining uh, and make everybody laugh. Uh, and, and I remember... Uh, even as a youth pastor, playing that game in some form or another uh, with the, the students in the group and us all laughing together because, you know, teenage uh, boys can be quite uh, funny when they're giving out random answers and, uh, you know, adjectives and nouns and verbs. They uh, always have something funny to say and so we'd always have, a, always have a good time doing that. Well, today I want to talk about how you and I sometimes live our life like a mad lib trying to fill in all the blanks for our story before the stories unfold. So with the Mad Lib, the story's already in place. It's on the next page. The story's written. It's in place. But you're given the opportunity on the previous page to fill in the blanks without knowing the story. And what you and I do in our lives as Christians many times is that we are filling out our story and filling in the blanks before we know the story. Right? In our lives, God does not always give us the whole story. In fact, I would venture to say he never gives us the full story. We never get the full picture for our lives. I don't know about you, but I don't know when my last breath will be. I don't know what's going to happen even this afternoon. I have my plans, but God has his plans. You know, years ago, uh, my plan was to go to church. On uh, November uh, 25th, 2007, that was my plan. Our family went to church. Well, God had another plan because on the way to church, we had a car accident. Mm -hmm. Right? That forever altered uh, my life and the life of my family. Uh, right? We all have plans and we have uh, desires, right? And things that we set out. Uh, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do X. I'm going to do Y. I'm going to marry this person, right? Filling out those bad lips with our plans, uh, filling in the blanks but without asking God first. Mm -hmm. And so we live our lives, and what happens is, is that as you and I uh, walk and live in our lives, and we begin to fill in the blanks with answers that we already had to what's starting to happen in our life, we become disappointed. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, what job do I want to have when I grow up? Well, I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> Right? And then, so life starts to unfold, and you start to make decisions in your life. And from that decision that you made before the life uh, opportunity provided, you made a decision before the opportunity was presented, and sometimes you fill in the blank, I fill in the blank, and the wrong decision's made. Mm -hmm. Right? And here's the thing, uh, or you and I uh, fill in the blank, but God's uh, already got the blank filled. And our little word, our little purpose, our will won't fit in the blank where God's already filled it in. 
And so we become discouraged or frustrated and angry that what we figured out a decade ago is not happening right the way we want it to. Hey, we already answered that question, God. I want this spouse. I want this friend. Or these types of friends. God, I, I, I want this job. God, I want to be this. I want to do this. I already answered all those questions. Now how come when I walk and as my story unfolds, my answers aren't fitting in to the blanks? And I get angry. We get angry because we had it all planned out. We answered all the questions before the story unfolded. And we're disappointed in the story. Where God is telling you and I that we are to trust and have faith in him and not answer the questions beforehand. Now that doesn't mean that we don't have goals. And that doesn't mean that you and I just give up. And it doesn't mean that you, know, you don't uh, work or try to uh, you live your life. But what it does mean is, is that you and I are satisfied with what God gives us. Understanding that he is in sovereign control. And that our dreams, our answers, our ideas do not always fit within God's plan or purpose. And I can tell you from experience that uh, God's plan and purpose will always be more fulfilling than what our own plan and purpose is. Amen. It always will be if we'll give it a chance. If we won't give up, if we won't get angry, if we won't yell at God, if we won't get frustrated, if we don't get mad, right? Then ultimately God's purpose will always be more fulfilling to us than what we thought we wanted or needed. It's just having the faith and the trust in him that he knows what's best for us. And when you and I look together at Proverbs chapter 16, it is a perfect uh, explanation of God's purpose and will as it applies to our lives. If we will look at these first three verses and apply them to our lives uh, and, and begin to walk daily according to these principles and these verses, then it will help us more accept when our answer is not the answer to the question that God's asking or doesn't fit into the blank of our story of what we're facing right then and right there. How many of you tried to write your story in advance? All of us. Billy uh, is very, uh, 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 is it left brain, very much uh, creative and memory, and he hates following rules. When he was a kid, he hated the rules. Uh, when he was in art class, uh, they would give him rules and uh, teach, try to teach him how to do art, and he would, he would not do it. They would say, do this, and Billy would not do it. He would do whatever it is that came to his mind, whatever it was to sculpt or draw or do, and he would get frustrated uh, because he couldn't understand why they would, they, he was getting in trouble because he was doing, he was expressing himself. He was deciding the assignment. I remember this one time in particular, they had given him a, 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 a prompt to write a story. The whole class had been given the same prompt. And Billy didn't like the prompt. And so he wrote this huge multi-page epic on dragons. And the teacher uh, gave, had to give him an F on it. And uh, this is when he was in middle school, I believe. And... Uh, he couldn't understand. Why in the world did he get a, a, a bad grade on this? He wrote this magnificent Iliad, you know, on dragons and knights. And Kelly and I, uh, Kelly had a conference with the teacher to find out why he got an F. And the teacher said, listen, his story was the best one in the class. She said it was imaginative, it was creative, it was well written. She said, but this is not what I told him to write about. And so, therefore, he did not pass the assignment. And he was so disappointed and upset and could not understand how he could get such a bad grade on such a great paper. And how many of us live our lives that way 
where we've already written the story, no matter what God's opened doors he's given, no matter what God's laid upon our heart, no matter what our circumstances are, we've written our story, our fairy tale, our story of dragons and knights and victories and overcoming and what we're going to be, uh, and then we get an F on the assignment. God says, no, nope, you got it all wrong. Uh, you didn't follow my prompt. Here's the prompt. Here's how your story is going to go. And we become disappointed and upset. And so Psalms chapter, or Proverbs chapter 16 helps us to get ahead of that before we start writing our own story and start filling in our own blanks. So verse 1 says, the preparations of the heart belong to man. Meaning that man loves to make his own plans. Right? Uh, that is human nature. We want to control our destiny. We want to control our future. It's why we live in a world today of miserable people. Not only in the church, but outside the church in both ways, right? There are miserable people outside and miserable people inside. In fact, I would uh, venture to guess there are probably more miserable people on this earth than there are content people. Yep. <laughs> right? The miserable people far outweigh the content people in our churches and in the world. Amen. On your jobs, think about how many people on your jobs are actually content. Honestly, I don't know if I can count on one hand. I can't count myself. <laughs> I can't even do number one for me. Right? <laughs> how many people in your lives are actually content and happy with where they're at. Now we're miserable because from a young age we start writing our own story on how our lives are going to be. I'm going to graduate college. I'm going to do X. I'm going to do what? It is man's nature to do those things, to have, to be selfish and self-centered and want what we want when we want it. Amen. And despite anything else in our lives, when we don't get what we want, when we want it, we get upset. Mm -hmm. I have lived most of my life upset. <laughs> my, my mom and my wife will uh, uh, testify that uh, I always have ideas and plans on how I think things should go, and when they don't, I get angry. I get very frustrated. Even though I know that God is in control, I still don't like that he's in control. Come on. Help us, Jesus. Right? Uh, uh, we, we still don't like that he's in control, that we like him to be in control in the good things. Mm -hmm. And we like to, uh, him to be in control uh, in certain <coughs> things, but man, there's certain parts of our life where we tell God, hands off. Mm -hmm. That belongs to me. Uh, when I was a kid, we had all these toys. We had the toys that belonged to us or the toys that the babysitting kids could play with, that my mom babysat. The toys that were in our rooms belong to us. Don't touch them. We tell God, hands off. That area I've got figured out. I know who I'm going to marry. I picked them. I didn't ask you first. I didn't seek your guidance. I didn't seek your direction. But my goodness, that person's for me. That boy, that girl, mm. Have you looked at him? He's so sweet. She's so beautiful. <laughs> But we never ask God what he wants. And that's why there's so many divorces and so many miserable people out there uh, and broken families. It's because people didn't stop and ask God what they were supposed to do. And so they, they act and what they want. And then they get upset when it doesn't work out and we get mad at God. But we've told God, don't touch. So many aspects of our lives, we tell God, keep your hands off. We have, we make the preparations in our heart of what our life is going to be at, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. God always fills in the blanks. God's perfect will, his will for your life, he decides, not me and not you. And thank goodness, because ultimately, when you get old and at the end of our lives, I'm sure we'll look back and go, thank God that he let his will be done and not mine. Right? Thank God that, that his will was done and not my will was done, ultimately. Uh, because if my will, if I'd gotten my way every single time, I'd be in big trouble. Yep. I would not be where I'm even at today. You would not be where you're at today if you got your way every single time. Many times, God's no is a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. That's right. Amen. And it's hard for us to understand and accept that in the midst of the situation because no one likes to be told no. When you were a kid, you didn't like no. When you are in middle school, you didn't like no. When you are in high school, you didn't like no. And as an adult, we don't like no. Amen. No one likes to be told no. My little Ruthie uh, doesn't even know what the word no means. Uh, now that she's gotten older, uh, Poppy, when she was little, when she first started toddling around and she would come to breakable things on the shelf, I'd say, don't touch, and then I made a mistake. I said, okay, just do this. Boop. So now, she's almost four, and when you tell her no, don't touch, she'll look at you and smile and go, boop. <laughs> Which Poppy thinks is cute and adorable. <laughs> Mimi and Mommy and Daddy don't think it's cute and adorable when they tell her no. And she still reaches out and just so innocently touches it, right? Uh, we don't like to be told no. And many times we are conditioned just like I conditioned her. We're conditioned in our home. Giving our kids everything they want is not what they need. Amen. We all make those mistakes. Uh, and we need to look and realize that we make the plans for ourselves, but God is the one who gives the answer. Mm -hmm. So we can plan, 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 plan all day long, but it is God's answer that matters. In our lives, in the lives of our children, in the lives of our families, it is God's plan that matters in our world. No matter what our political leaders do and scheme and plan, let me tell you something, they're corrupt as much on the left as they are on the right and vice versa. They're in it for themselves. And so, but the truth is, no matter how they scheme and plan and do things, God still is the answer. Yes. Yes. They plan and plan and plan, God still is the one who speaks the answer. And it's his word that matters, not me. Amen. And so... You know, when man speaks over our lives and tries to enforce things on us, we know that God can override them with but a word. Amen. We must put our faith and our trust in him. Verse 2. And all the ways of man are pure in his own eyes. We look at our own thoughts and our own desires and our own choices and say, my goodness, how great is that? <laughs> it's like when you're a kid and you're drawing your little piece of artwork of stick figures and you think it's a masterpiece. Hang it on the refrigerator, mom and dad. Uh, we had all kinds of pictures, specifically from Billy, hung on our refrigerator. Billy with these little clay figures mm -hmm. all over the place. My mom can attest that she, she fed that horrible habit of playing with clay, uh, that he would have clay. You guys don't even understand how much clay this kid had. And he had his fingers, and if you touched them fingers and they got messed up, he was furious. Ugliest little things you ever seen in your life, but he thought they were masterpieces. Right? We all think our work is beyond reproach and amazing. All of us do. Wow, that is great. Woohoo! Yay, me! Right? All of us have that uh, feeling that we're doing the right thing and our way is better than everybody else's way. We all have that. And we help believe, actually uh, begin to believe that our way is better than God's way. We doubt that he cares for us and that he loves us. We doubt that he has our best interests at heart. Why? Because we think we got it all figured out. We've already filled in the blanks. Because my way is good. I know me. Ain't nobody knows me like I know me. Ain't nobody knows my gifts like I know my gifts and what I'm good at. Right? No one knows... My desires, like I know my desires. No one knows what I want to do, like I know what I want to do. And I don't want anybody else over, uh, interfering with that. No, we want every all. Oh, we want everyone to make room for us and our ways, and we don't want to make room for anybody else. Not even God. We, we want to make room for our desires, our plans, our purposes, because, man, they're good. But we don't want to make allowances or we want, don't want to submit to what God has for our lives. 
And we think we got it all figured out. Our ways are pure in our own eyes. The problem is, is that every single human being on the face of this earth, born after Adam, is born into sin, which means we are selfish and self-centered by nature. All of us are selfish and self-centered by nature. And so therefore, our motives are usually never pure. In and of themselves. Without God, our motives aren't pure. Without God, our decisions are not always pure and based in what's best for us and our lives. It's based on selfishness and self-centeredness. Which is why we live our in disappointment. It goes on to say in verse 2, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Weighs. And the balance, God weighs your plan versus his plan. Mm -hmm. Your will versus his will. You think your will is amazing. Here is my beautiful artwork of stick figures. Meanwhile, God has a Picasso painted for you. God has something so amazing waiting for us. He weighs it and he knows his is better than yours and mine. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows what's good for us. God knows what's good for you more than you know what's good for you. We don't like that. We don't accept it. But he does. And it's hard. I don't, I don't pretend to have all the answers of why people go through what they go through. Why people have to experience sickness or loss or pain, or suffering, and you say, God, how can this be good for me? I can't tell you what the answer is today, except to tell you that I know that ultimately all things work to the good of those who are called according to God's purpose. Right? That's what I know. I know that there is a hope for a future. Amen. That Jesus came to give us abundant life. And that that means that what God has for you is greater than what you and I have for ourselves. If we will just trust in Him. And His plan and His purpose. You say, what is the purpose in my pain? God, why, why is this sickness? How, how is that helping me? It's just breaking me down. It's just hurting me. It's just causing me physical pain and, and it's causing despair. What could the purpose be? God says, trust me. Someday you may be able to minister to someone else who's hurting. Someday you may be testifying of the goodness and the greatness of God for his healing power. Yeah. You may be like Paul where you take that thorn with you to your grave that thorn in your flesh, that God never heals you, but it's what keeps you dependent upon him. See, some of us, and I am talking about myself, need to constantly have despair and uh, disruption in their life to seek God. And if God lifts up off the pedal, we will slip right back into our old habits and behaviors. Amen. We have to have that thorn in the flesh because if we don't, we will always think that we know better than God. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. You know why? Because if he didn't, he would become prideful and arrogant. He was prideful and arrogant as a Pharisee. He could not be prideful and arrogant as an apostle. And so therefore, he had a thorn in his flesh that aggravated him and bothered him that we don't know what it was. Whether it was a person or whether it was a health issue, we have no idea, but we know this, that it humbled him, it kept him grounded, and let him know that God was always in control, that his grace was sufficient, that no matter what he was going through, God had it. Amen. So even though he went to his grave with that thorn in the flesh, he lived his life in fullness before God, that thorn kept him in line. God, and many times, knows that if he removed the thorn, we would immediately stop trusting in him. 
So sometimes we should stop being mad at the thorn and be thankful for the thorn. And let me tell you something, I'm preaching to myself today because I don't like thorns. I don't like being uncomfortable. None of us do. But that's why we've got to look at these verses and look at God's word and look at the faithfulness of God and understand that even if he chooses not to remove it, it's there for a reason. And God, please open my eyes to see the reason. Paul's eyes were open to see the reason. My grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Let God open our eyes. We don't have to know the whole story, but help us to trust him that there's a reason and a purpose. He promises there always is. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. That word commit there literally means to roll around. What I imagine is, when I read that word and understand what it means to roll around, what I see is this. I see my kids, or me as a kid, rolling up in a blanket. You ever do that, make yourself a burrito? When you're a kid, or see your kids do it, where they lay in a blanket and then they roll themselves up in it, nice and stud, and they're completely covered and consumed by the blanket. So what this is saying here is we need to roll around, allow ourselves to be covered by, engulfed in, rely upon the will of God and his goodness in our lives. Amen. Roll ourselves up in him, his will, and his goodness, and his grace, and his mercy, and trust and faith in him. Roll ourselves up in that. And allow that to protect us, to keep us, to secure us, and to focus us. That's what we're supposed to do. And if we will do that, it is then that our thoughts will be established. We will have peace. So many times in our lives we are double-minded because we have what we want and God has what he wants. And we don't want what God wants, we want what we want. And so our thoughts are always split between our will and God's will. We cannot be double-minded. Amen. Meaning we can't focus on what we want and what God wants at the same time and have any kind of success or peace or joy or abundant life. You have to be single-minded, focused upon God. We cannot be double-minded. Right. means we've got to focus on the things of God and not the things of man. Amen. And if we live our lives focused upon God, and it is a daily sacrifice, it is a discipline to force our eyes upon Christ and to not look at what it is that we want and look at what the world has to offer. Amen. That is daily taking up your cross and following him, denying ourselves to serve him. Amen. To not be double-minded, but to be single-minded, focusing on God. And if you and I will commit our ways to him, our thoughts will be established if we will put our faith, our trust in him and who he is and who he says he is and what he's done. If we will roll ourselves up in that, then we will not be tormented by double-mindedness. If you and I want to live abundant lives in Christ, then we have to focus upon him and submit ourselves to his will, his purpose for our lives. Not try to be like that mad lib and fill it all out in advance and fill in the blanks and have it all figured out because the minute we do that, we're going to be disappointed. Disappointed, Disappointment brings frustration. Frustration brings anger. Anger brings resentment and bitterness. Amen. And bitterness will destroy anyone. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that you enjoyed it and were blessed by it. Each month we have people from all over the world who listen to the messages made available. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you consider making a donation of any amount to help support us as we continue to reach a loss for Christ? Donations can be made online at www.reviveoc.org or by check at Revive Outreach Church, 411 Chatham Heights Road, Suite 101, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22405. Thank you for your prayers and your continued support. May God richly bless you.